Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. Breaking news this noon, police, family, and friends are looking for a missing boy from the Southern Valley. Thanks for joining us. I'm Christine Stanwood. Police in Lisbon are asking for help finding missing sixth grader Dallas Clausen. The 12 year old did not return home last night. He's about five feet, three inches tall and 130 pounds with blonde shoulder length shaggy hair and blue eyes. Dallas was last seen wearing black shorts and a black t-shirt and had black had a back backpack with five green stripes and an arrow symbol. So if you see him or you know where he is, contact the Lisbon police or your local law enforcement. New at noon, a frightening ordeal for some families in the Southern Valley overnight. Police say a burglary suspect is still on the loose after a chase and search that lasted for several hours. Sergeant County Sheriff Travis Paper says it started around 9 last night when a homeowner in rural Milner, North Dakota, spotted a possible burglary in progress on his property. The suspect led police on a chase through Ransom and Sargent counties and finally stopped when his car got stuck in a bean field. Now, several law enforcement agencies descended upon the area when the guy took off on foot. Some even tell Valley News Live viewers that they say they got a phone call telling them to stay inside and lock their doors. Police are still looking for the man who two officers got a good look at when he rammed their squad cars. He's a white male around 5'10 with a medium build and who looked like he was in his 50s. Also new at noon, a man is dead and a woman was airlifted to a Fargo hospital after a rollover in Griggs County, North Dakota. The North Dakota Highway Patrol says the driver of a Corvette missed a curve on Highway 200 near Cooperstown around 7.30 last night. He overcorrected and the car rolled into a ditch. The driver died at the scene. There's no word on the woman's condition. Bemidji State University football coach Jeff Tesh has been put on, on leave of absence. And Valley News Live has heard comments that it's because of racial slurs Tesh allegedly made to his players. School officials will neither conform, confirm nor deny, but do say a complaint against Tesh is being investigated. Tesh has been a coach at BCU, BSU, excuse me, for 21 years. It was an historic flight out of Florida this morning. JetBlue is the first commercial airline to fly between the United States and Cuba in 55 years. The 72 minute trip opens a new era of the United States Cuba travel, which was severed during the peak of the Cold War in 1961. Soon as many as 110 daily flights from the 10 airlines will depart the U.S. for Cuba. It's another quiet and beautiful day outside. How long will this nice weather be here to stay? Let's check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn. Robert? Yeah, another nice day for the vast majority of us. A bit more cloudiness in our far western counties and even a few showers and storms very close to our western counties. We'll show you that on the radar here in just a moment. But most of us seeing plenty of sunshine temperatures in the 60s and 70s. We'll warm it into the 70s and 80s. Later on this afternoon, winds just like they have been on the past couple of days. Relatively light and they'll remain rather light as we head through the rest of today. But those winds will start to pick up as we head through your Thursday, Friday and Saturday gusty out of the south. There are those clouds off towards the west and underneath those clouds we've seen some persistent showers and some thunderstorms drifting off towards the south and southeast. They may clip our far western counties as we head through this afternoon, but I think most of us will stay dry. Over the next couple of days, carbon copies of what we've seen over the past couple of days, some low 80s, nice temperatures. The big difference tomorrow will be some gusty winds. We've got some stormy weather to talk about over the holiday weekend. We'll get to that in just a minute. Okay, thanks, Robert. Mm -hmm. It's a busy day on the campaign trail as Donald Trump meets face to face with the president of Mexico. It's a high stakes last minute visit with the leader who has been openly critical of the Republican nominee. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton is addressing veterans and facing new revelations about the content of some newly recovered emails. Craig Boswell has the late on the race for the White House. Donald Trump is headed to Mexico to meet with Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto. President Peña extended an invitation to the Republican nominee and explained why. I believe in dialogue to promote Mexico's interest and to protect Mexicans. Many Mexicans are not happy about Trump's visit. Former First Lady Margarita Zavala tweeted, although they have invited you, no, you are not welcome. Mussolini, ya se llegó Hitler. Peña has been an outspoken critic of Trump, comparing him to Mussolini and Hitler. He says Mexico 
Mexico will not renegotiate NAFTA or pay to build Trump's wall. Big speech on immigration. Trump is scheduled to clarify his stance on immigration tonight in Phoenix after softening his rhetoric about deportation forces rounding up America's 11 million undocumented immigrants. Hillary Clinton is back on the campaign trail after spending most of last week fundraising. She's speaking to veterans at the American Legion convention in Cincinnati. The State Department now says some of the emails the FBI recovered from her private email server contain approximately 30 documents that may be related to the Benghazi attack that killed four Americans. The FBI is expected to publicly release notes from its investigation of Hillary Clinton's private email server. Craig Boswell, CBS News, The White House. A new poll from the Washington Post shows Hillary Clinton has the highest unfavorable ratings than at any time in her public life. 56% of those surveyed say they don't have a favorable impression of the Democratic nominee. Donald Trump fares a little worse with a 63% unfavorable rating. There's new information on a deadly crash in Minnesota that killed two firefighters. The co-worker from Michigan who was driving the bus involved is now facing charges. A criminal complaint says 28-year-old Michael Johnson told authorities he'd slept just 45 minutes the previous 28 hours and had used marijuana the morning of the crash. Police say he was driving a bus with eight firefighters returning from helping with a fire in Utah when he fell asleep behind the wheel and drove off the interstate near Blaine, Minnesota. Fargo Public Schools are preparing students and parents for a new school year. And a big concern is opioid drug use in the area. School officials sent a letter to families yesterday asking parents to talk with their children about drugs. Staff members and students are encouraged to report suspicious behavior to their building principal or school resource officer. A pub public forum on the issue is being held at Fargo South High on September 7th at 7 p.m. The social neighborhood network site next door has a new feature that makes it easier to report problems to police. A person who creates a post in a crime and safety category on the site is now able to share that with the Fargo police. Police tell Valley News Live they encourage people to connect with them on the site, but also want to remind, remind people to call them directly for an emergency or another urgent matter. Minnesota Vikings fans everywhere are more than a bit bummed today. Excitement for the new season quickly turned to agony when starting quarterback Teddy Bridgewater went down during practice yesterday. The team says Bridgewater is out for the season after dislocating his knee. He has a torn ACL and other damage, but is expected to make a full recovery.